in order to develop uh, an Android remote service, we first need to code the AIDL file that includes the definition for an interface. The AIDL compiler the Eclipse includes goes over this code and generates auto -gener automatically a new source code that includes the definition for the same interface we define in the AIDL file. This interface we define in the AIDL file includes definition for those methods we want to enable code that belongs to another application to use, to invoke. Once the AIDL file was completed and the auto-generated code that includes the definition for the interface was created, we should move forward and code our service. Just as with local service, we just need to define a class that extends service, and then we should define a class that extends stub. Stub is a static abstract inner class that belongs to the interface, the auto-generated interface that was created for the interface we define in the AIDL file. Here, within this auto-generated code, we can find a static abstract inner class. Its name is stub. Stub extends android.os.binder and stub implements the interface, the very same interface we defined. The only abstract methods that stub includes are those that belong to the interface. So, we just need to define a class that extends stub and implements those abstract methods. The onBind method in our class, the class that extends service, should return a new object instantiated from the class, the class we defined as a class that extends stub. In addition, in the manifest file of the server, we should pay attention to the service XML element and the intent filter we use. Later, we, should, we will need to use an intent configured according to this intent filter in order to uh, bind with this remote service. In this code sample, we have two applications. The server application includes one component only, the service. The client application needs to include the same AIDL file we were using in the server application. Once we code this file, the AIDL compiler automatically generates the real interface, the iCurrency service interface with the Java extension. The source code the AIDL compiler generates um, can be found within the gen folder. Here it is. Now let's go over the code sample of the client in order to understand how we can use an Android remote service. So if we take a look at the source code, we can uh, find a very simple user interface that includes three buttons. I already have this client up and running. These are the three buttons. When the user press bind service, this is the code that get invoked and uh, this code um, includes an invocation for the bind service method we pass over an intent object configured in according with the intent filter of the remote service
In addition, we pass over a reference for a service connection object. Service connection is an interface. We should uh, define a class that implements this interface in, and instantiate it, just as we did here. There are two abstract methods the service connection interface includes on service connected and on service disconnected these two are callback functions when we call the bind service method pass, passing over a service connection object if everything goes as expected then the on service connected uh, method is invoked here, the second argument is an iBinder object. We can use the static method as interface that uh, belongs to the auto-generated um, class stub, an inner type within iCurrency service, in order to get a reference for, a, uh, for the object that represents the real object on the server. This code is executed within the client application and here we get a, an object that implements that very specific interface we defined in a IDA file. However, this object is just kind of an hologram, a representative for the real object that um, belongs to the other application. However, once we get that reference for the uh, for the object, we can invoke those methods we defined in the AIDL interface. That interface that was defined within a, a file with the AIDL extension. So when the user press call and the call button, let's take a look. We first press bind get become binded with the remote service and then when we press call uh, here in this code sample there is an invocation for call service and within call service we can see an invocation for the get currency method get currency was defined within the iCurrency service interface so we call the get currency object the get currency method on the object we got however Underneath, there is a communication with the remote Android service and the getCurrency method is invoked on the re real object. Uh, whatever it returns is returned over here and in this code sample we just present it to the screen. So let's see how does it work. I press call and here it is. Now if I press the unbind button then the unbind service method is invoked the service connection object is passed over and the callback function on service disconnected is invoked so we can take advantage of that and assign now to that uh, variable the iCurrency service uh, variable that holds the object that serves as an representative for the real object, kind of an hologram. So let's take a final look. Bind service calls the binding with the Android remote service. Call service is using that Android remote service and unbind just um, disconnect the connection with the Android remote service.